Well, Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling and Ricky Gervais have proved that if you stand up to the woke, eventually you win. J.K. Rowling's book sales went from $7 million to $11.9 million worth last year. J.K. Rowling and Ricky Gervais. What's the common thread? Both have shown that standing up to woke culture doesn't just make waves. It can be a winning move. Rowling's book sales exploded skyrocketing from $7 million to an incredible $1.09 billion last year alone. Not only has she crafted one of the world's most beloved fantasy series, but she's also held her ground against woke Hollywood, emerging stronger than ever. And let's face it, the fallout monumental. Followed by a number of deliberately misspelled versions of the word woman. Now, there was instant backlash to that. Uh, she was accused of being transphobic. Harry, po Harry Potter came to me on a train in 1990. I was sitting just staring out of the window and I, I, the idea just fell out of nowhere. It was the purest stroke of inspiration I've ever had in my life. And I've been writing about him ever since. But how did it get to this point? How did J.K. Rowling go from being the beloved creator of Hogwarts to a figure at the center of cultural controversy? How did Rowling go from creating the magical world of Hogwarts to becoming a central figure in a cultural war that keeps Twitter in a constant frenzy? To understand, we need to rewind to where it all began when Rowling first stepped into the modern cultural battleground. It started with a tweet that sent shockwaves through social media. Rowling critiques Scotland's first minister, Hamza Yousaf, and the country's controversial hate crime laws. Although intended to protect trans, identifying individuals, Rowling argued these laws overlooked the safety of biological women, sparking an intense and ongoing debate. The beginning of the end for Hamza Yousaf started when J.K. Rowling condemned Scotland's newly imposed hate crime laws, which extended to trans-identifying people but ignored biological women. Rowling's stance was unmistakable. These laws were sidelining women's rights in favour of a radical gender agenda. Instantly, Twitter ignited with accusations of transphobia hurled her way. But Rowling didn't back down. She doubled down, calling out Yousaf's woke obsession and warning that it was steering Scotland down a dangerous path. She criticized the hate crime laws as a disaster waiting to happen, arguing they were crafted to silence women speaking out for their rights. And as it turned out, she wasn't wrong soon enough. These laws were weaponized to silence anyone, even women simply advocating for their own spaces. It was chaos. But that was just the beginning. Before long, Rowling was pulled into an unexpected legal clash. Picture this. Alarian boxer and Kef was at the center of a heated debate during the 2024 Paris Olympics over her gender eligibility. As the controversy escalated, Kef filed a cyberbullying lawsuit and her primary target? None other than J.K. Rowling. I want to show you a message to all the people in the world that they are not happy with the Olympic Olympics, according to the Olympic Olympics, and to look at all the sports teams, because this thing has affected and affected a lot and a lot. Testosterone is not a perfect test. Many women who are not happy with the Olympic Olympics, the testosterone is not a perfect test. Many women can have testosterone, which is in what would be called male levels, and still be women. So, Panacea, this idea that suddenly you test, do test for testosterone and that's also everything. Not the case, I'm afraid. Oh, and to add to the chaos, Elon Musk and Donald Trump got dragged into the mix. Yes, it escalated that wildly testosterone and all. The lawsuit accused these high-profile figures of inciting online harassment against Kef and social media exploded. Rumors spread that Rowling was deleting tweets and running scared. But if anyone thought she was backing down, they were mistaken. After a brief pause, Rowling came back stronger than ever. She wasn't about to retreat instead. She doubled down on her stance, fiercely defending fairness in women's sports and condemning the absurdity of allowing biological men to compete against women. A young female boxer has just had everything she's worked and trained for snatched away because you allowed a male to get in the ring with her. You're a disgrace, your safeguarding is a joke, and ours Paris 24 will be forever tarnished by the brutal injustice done to Kari. As you can see, this is the infamous tweet from Rowling, where she claims that she would want to be a martyr for the transphobic movement, writing, I'd happily do two years if the alternative is compelled speech and forced denial of the reality of the importance of s Bring on the court case, I say. It'll be more fun than I've ever had on a red carpet. For Rowling, this was about fundamental fairness. 
Despite the lawsuit putting her back in the spotlight, she came out even stronger, resolute in her belief that woke activists were trying to rewrite the rules of competition. They thought they had her trapped, but here's the truth. Rowling doesn't get trapped. If you thought that was intense, let's dive into the Hollywood drama. Imagine creating one of the biggest film franchises in history, turning actors like Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Eddie Redmayne into household names. And then, boom, those same actors turn against you. That's exactly what happened to Rowling. Radcliffe, Watson, and Redmayne, who owe their careers to the Harry Potter phenomenon, publicly sided with woke activists against the very woman who launched them into stardom. Radcliffe went all out, boldly declaring, Trans women are women. Daniel Radcliffe has admitted he hasn't spoken to J.K. Rowling in years and branded the fallout over their trans views as sad. The 34-year-old said, I have heard this. This is something that has like come up every so often for the last few years and every time it comes up on like, it's not. She tweeted, trans people are who they say they are and deserve to live their lives without being constantly questioned or told they aren't who they say they are. She went on to say, I want my trans followers to know that I and so many other people around the world see you, respect you and love you for who you are. Happy pride, sending love. He accused Rowling of erasing the identity and dignity of transgender people adding that her stance contradicts the positions of professional healthcare associations. Meanwhile, Watson took to social media using hashtags to voice her support for the transgender community. Redmayne wasn't far behind, asserting that Rowling was simply wrong and that trans women are, without question, women. He was so upset that Rowling was facing criticism for her anti-transgender tweets and her 3,700 word rambling diatribe against transgender people. How did Rowling react to this Hollywood betrayal? She went full savage. Rowling called out her former stars for supporting a movement she believed was eroding women's rights. She wasn't about to let the actors, who owed their fame to her, use their platforms to push agendas that, in her view, undermined hard. One rights for women. And this was only the beginning of Rowling's clashes with the woke crowd. Remember when she almost got arrested? Yes, you heard that right, woke activists actually reported her to the police for misgendering someone on Twitter, hoping to have her charged under hate crime laws. JK Rowling to deliberately, and that is the key word, misgender me, knowing who I am, is grossly offensive. It is a hate crime. Can you believe it? The woman who created Hogwarts, a magical escape for millions, was nearly thrown in jail for defending her stance on women's rights. Did she back down? Not for a second. Instead of running scared, Rowling took to Twitter again, daring the police to arrest her if her words were truly a crime. She made it crystal clear that she wouldn't let activists intimidate her, no matter the threat. And then came a massive win for Rowling One that silenced much of the criticism. For years, she had been vocal about the risks of transitioning minors. There has been a huge backlash against the transgender community, and specifically transgender social media star Dylan Mulvaney after they got a brand deal from Bud Light. A beer is now promoting itself during March Madness, a male-oriented event, by hiring a man who says he is a woman dressed as Audrey Hepburn to sell you beer. Whether you're liberal or conservative, you probably have some strong feelings about this. Rowling argued that many children with gender dysphoria naturally grow out of it and warned that rushing them into medical transitions could have serious long-term consequences we might not fully understand. The backlash was immediate and intense. Trans activists accused her of spreading hate and being out of touch. But Rowling held firm. Then the unexpected happened. Then the unexpected happened. The ACH, the UK's National Health Service, began scaling back the use of puberty blockers and cross mm -hmm. sex hormones for minors. Just like that, a key part of Rowling's concerns was vindicated. Not knowing where to turn, she went to a gender identity clinic and started treatment, including surgery, to become Quincy. Eight years on, she wants to transition back to being a woman and is suing the NHS. It's such a serious process to go down and it's so experimental because, you know, doctors don't even know, you know, the outcomes of a lot of these uh, treatments that are given out. I should have been, you know, told to wait and, and not affirmed in uh, my gender identity. After years of being labelled a transphobe, the medical community began acknowledging what Rowling had been warning about all along. Her supporters were quick to note how vindicated she'd become. This wasn't just a personal victory for Rowling. It marked a pivotal moment in the conversation around children's safety and the rush to medically transition. 
Consider this. J.K. Rowling has faced lawsuits, celebrity betrayal, police investigations, and an endless wave of online hate. She even openly challenged Scotland's laws on biological definitions, saying, If what I've written here qualifies as an offence under the new Act, I look forward to being arrested when I return to the birthplace of the Scottish Enlightenment. Despite being labelled a transphobe, a turf, and everything in between, the woke mob has tried time and again to cancel her and failed each time. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.